So Frank, welcome to Kiev, um, and welcome. Like uh, it's finally, we finally have like a real startup weekend here in Kiev. Mm -hmm. um, I think there were several attempts to do it, and like finally with help of Oksana and some other people, uh, it is. It is yes. here. So, welcome to Kiev. Thank you very much. Is it like first time you here in Eastern Europe or? Uh, uh, no, I've been in Russia. Uh, been actually, in Russia. Um, we have uh, a lot of startup weekend happening in Russia. Uh, mm -hmm. They're run by uh, Arkady. Yeah, uh, many which, which you might know, and um, the format is slightly different. That's the version I think that happened uh, that happened before, but uh, that was um, a couple of years ago when we started to uh, to work with Russia. That made more sense at that time. And actually, Arkady, I've started to run uh, also a classic startup weekend uh, now in Russia. So um, I've been there uh, in Saint Petersburg, I've been in Moscow, and uh, it's my first time now in uh, in Ukraine. I'm very Is excited it, to like, be here. Are you one of the like, people who started the startup weekend, the, the, the whole movement, or? Uh -huh. So, Can you tell me the story? So, Startup Weekend initially was uh, founded by Andrew Hyde in uh, 2007 in okay. Boulder, Colorado. Uh, the format was slightly different at that time. It was 100 people working on one idea. Uh, the format evolved to something close to, to what it is today. Um, in 2009, my two, uh, my two co-founders, Mark and Clint, uh, came and see Andrew and said, dude, we have all these ideas about everything we would like to do about Startup Weekend. Andrew, at that time, was starting to work with Techstars, was their yeah. first employee. I said, you know what, guys, like, uh, what about you take over it? And so uh, in May 2009, they took Startup Weekend from Boulder, Colorado to Seattle, switched it from a for-profit to a non-profit. And I met uh, Mark two months after, in August uh, 2009. Mm -hmm. We started to all work together. And uh, in 2009, we organized uh, 21 Startup Weekend. It in was this the first 21 events were exclusively in the US? Right? No, we had, we had some already uh, from, I would say, uh, before when Andrew was uh, organizing them um, a little bit everywhere. And then it started again in the US, in Seattle, in San Francisco. Uh, that's where I met, uh, I met Mark two months, uh, two months after for okay. his first startup weekend. And um, what happened after that is in 2009, we had 20, uh, 21 events. And then we expanded. In 2010, we had some support from the Kaufman Foundation. By the end of the year, we organized 80 events. Uh, in uh, last year, in 2011, we organized 260 events. 260. And this year, year, yes. And this year, we're organizing 500 of them. And we're currently 500, yeah, really. And we're currently in 108 countries. And just this weekend, we had more than 16 events, uh, including one in uh, Egypt. Uh, There's one in, Min in Minsk, I think, this weekend. One in Minsk? No, I don't think this uh, weekend. But I'm sure close uh, close oh, yeah. on nearby. There was one in uh, Mongolia. Uh, two months ago, we had one in Tehran, in Iran. Um, and so it just happened everywhere, and it keeps uh, it keeps spreading. And uh, it's, uh, so, like 500 events this year, really? <laughs> yes. And uh, just in November, for Global Entrepreneurship Week, we have this competition we do for GW called Global Startup Battle. Yeah. And during uh, GW, we have uh, 150 events, uh, 120 events, sorry, happening in two weeks, just uh, just in two weekends. Wow. By the way, you have like, do you have what kind of accent do you have? French? Is I'm French? French. Yes. So French. Okay. But uh, I'm I'm just French by accent. I guess I'm, uh, I feel more American. I uh, always uh, always wanted to uh, to go there, and I've, I've been living in Seattle for uh, for three years. And uh, so before uh, what, you moved from France, or yeah, I okay. moved from France to, uh, so to Seattle. How big is like? How do you do? Uh, um, um, there is like two ways you can do uh, so many events. Either you have to have a, like a huge team. Or you have a franchise, like when there's like net independent teams or people doing yeah. these events. So how it works? Exactly. So it works based on our community. Um, the way it works is anyone can organize a startup weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, the only prerequisite is to attend a startup weekend, okay. and then you go online and you can uh, you go through a process. We have um, we have 26 uh, people working with us, uh, mainly doing operations. Each of them interview the, the people who wants to, uh, mm -hmm. to organize an event. If there is a community that exists before, we connect them to a community. We really don't want to uh, hurt the community. We really try to, uh, to help the community, and that's why we rely on, uh, on the organizer to, uh, to help us to do that. And um, the organizer volunteers to organize, uh, to organize the event. At the end of the event, on average, we make uh, a thousand uh, US dollars of profit. Uh, How much? A thousand US dollars of profit. Right. And that's mainly for the US. The truth is uh, when we do events abroad, uh, most of the time, we lose money, uh, yeah. so one side compensates the, the other one. So if and, you, yeah. uh, uh, and just to finish, yeah. what we put in, um, in position to ha keep helping the community is we have what's called the community chest. And so we do a 50% goes to support the organization, and 50% uh -huh. uh, of the profits stay locally to help the local ecosystem. Okay. So, that's so you split 50-50 uh, like yeah. the, any revenue? We, we, so tried, over, we tried over models, uh, but we really want the people to help us and to organize us, also to give back to the community. And yeah. this budget also helps us to do things for them. So, for example, once you organize Startup Weekend, 
once a year, we organize something called the Startup uh, Organizer Summit, so Summit. Uh -huh. uh, next year, actually, it's going to be in Rio. So you're going to have 200, yeah, you're going to have 200 organizers from all over the world. We organize Startup Weekend, who are the most active people in their community, to all meet in, uh, oh. in Rio de Janeiro. Do you pay, uh, like a we pay half of a ticket, and, but they can use... Can I be invited? Yeah, of course you are, <laughs> uh, but, but half, of it, uh, half of the ticket is paid oh, yeah. by Startup Weekend. But the other half, you can actually use uh, the community chest to, uh, to, uh, to get uh, to get so, but, but the idea is, when Just you do that, no, it's okay. The, the idea is, when you do that, uh, you get this amazing community. Uh, and you've got someone from Ukraine who's going to meet someone from Germany and become very good friend. And because of that, the ecosystem, yeah. uh, through cross-pollination, also is doing yeah, better things. Yeah, I met a few so. people. Like, yeah, I went in uh, Startup Weekend Astana. Okay. I met my... Uh, Oh yeah, from, yeah, yeah. From Norway. Uh, yeah, she's from Norway. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, and so, so just for the fewer, like, so you have someone from Norway going to Kazakhstan. But yeah. uh, these are facilitators. That's what I'm doing here. You have the organizer, but at every event, we have uh, roughly 60 or 70 facilitators around the world who are senior organizers who've been organizing dozens of events and who come to be sure that every single event is the same. So for example, here, uh, you helped uh, yeah. to organize this event. Oksana is the one who, uh, who, who is the, the lead yeah, organizer. She did most of the work, actually. She did all of the work. And, um, but the thing is, uh, the, the, the event that happened here in uh, Kiev is exactly the same that happened in San Francisco, exactly the same that you went to when you went to, uh, to Kazakhstan. Yeah. Uh, the, the, maybe there's like some little cultural differences, but that's what we have. Any time you go to a startup weekend, it's going to be exactly the same around the world. Okay, so if I say if I live some place like Kharkiv or whatever, Omsk, and I want to do this startup weekend. Like, do I have to pay you guys something on how it works? No, you so go I just go and say you hello. You go on the website yeah. startupweekend.org slash organizers. It's in the about page yeah. and the how to organize an event. And there's a little uh, pamphlet explaining how it works. And again, step one, uh, having yeah. attended a startup weekend, that's the first step. Okay, so is it uh, the startup weekend? Is it a non-profit organization or is it like for-profit? We're, we're non-profit. We non are uh, we are a five hundred one c three. That's the non-profit in, uh, in, in US. the US. Yeah. And um, so that's how we uh, we operate. And right. non-profit means we we don't own any equity, meaning that we can sell a startup weekend. We really do that for for what's best for the, for the community. That's cool. Hmm? I mean, and and what's like the ultimate goal? Like, do you have specific goal in mind you're trying to achieve? Or? Oh, we do. We have uh, what's called a BHAG, a big, uh, hairy, ambitious goal. Uh, big, hairy, ambitious goal. Okay. Yeah. So one of our vision is to say, imagine a world right now, like uh, we're in a specific community where people love to, uh, to create stuff, entrepreneurs. L just in the US, if you look in the US, the number of people who create a business every year, last year, represents 0.25% of the active population. That's nothing. Yeah. Uh, how can we increase that? Imagine a world where everybody who has an idea uh, can go to, uh, to a startup weekend. Imagine, uh, instead of 0.25%, imagine what would happen if you just get 1% of a population who realize they can take their own life and say, I'm going to do what I'm passionate about. I'm going to create my company. I'm going to create my business. And that's, that's, that's not the local event that matters. It's mm -hmm. the community. It's this revolution we try, uh, we, try, we try to lead. And where when you realize that you're not crazy, and that there's other people crazy like you, little by little, it becomes like, like a virus. So our, our vision is to get... Uh, by the, the next two years, like more than 2,000 events a year, and, uh, and, and keep, keep, keep expanding and getting as many people and as many entrepreneurs as possible in this world, because we believe that's one of the only ways you can you know, fulfill your life uh, by following your passion and, uh, and trying to, uh, to change the world, and to, uh, that's what entrepreneurs do, right? Yeah, that's very cool. I mean, uh, um, um, yeah, sorry for that. She needs to. Uh, I mean, there's lots of people who don't realize that like it's possible. It's an, an like it's a an option for them not to go work somewhere, mm -hmm. but just to start something small and then work from here, from there to, to, to yeah. grow it. Exactly. And again, our motto is no toll collection. And the best way you can learn about entrepreneurship is by being here in this safe environment during a weekend, trying to create your company. And worst yeah. case scenario, you go back home and you go back to bed and everything is all right. Yeah. But, um, but what happened, and I will, uh, is actually, um, I would explain that later, but uh, uh, it's that people actually create stuff. We have more than 12% of the people after a year we still work on their, on their company full time. We drop their, their jobs. We've okay. got Do you track like graduates from your startup weekend, like who went on to become like some bigger companies? Tons of them. Like uh, yeah. again, ten percent. Like just just total at the end of this year, we're gonna have ten thousand teams. So it means at least we know somehow 
There's yeah. a pheasant company that came out of Startup Weekend. It doesn't mean we're going to survive and, uh, and do well, but it means like we have this impact. And the more you do this experiment, the more people become better entrepreneurship. And even if it doesn't work, then they try again. And then they become better entrepreneurs because they have more experience. And, uh, and they develop the, this network. So it's, uh, it's working, little yeah. by little. So one, one final question, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. So you basically travel all over the world, right? And like do events, not you, but your team, in, in different kind part, regions of the world. Mm -hmm. Do you like perceive any significant like, differences, like cultural or whatever, in, in different regions? So we, we don't travel much. Like We basically stay a lot in, uh, in Seattle. It's the people who organize yeah, the events that we want, to, uh, we want them to, to travel and to, to meet other people. But um, I've been traveling in the past, and uh, what's really funny about uh, entrepreneurship, or actually very fascinating, is it's one of the only things that, cross, that is cross-cultural, that, uh, that has no difference depending on you know, where you live, what's your religion, where, where you're from. Um, we have amazing events, uh, like, for example, the Startup Weekend in Egypt. Uh, in Egypt. We, had, we, had, we had a Startup Weekend in Egypt during the revolution. Really? During the revolution. People were risking their lives to, to go to, to create a company. Um, we had a startup weekend in Israel where we had Palestinians to come and to work with Israeli. Uh -huh. uh, we have the government of Israel who, who helped us to do that. And, and as soon as you do business, it's one of the oldest things. Like since uh, Babylon yeah. in, uh, 5,000 years ago, people were exchanging and selling things to each other. The, the, the Silk uh, Road uh, was how Europe started to connect with, uh, with Eurasia. The, the, the way the uh, America was discovered was through the, because of the spice yes. and, uh, and things like that. So, Business, uh, creating a company is actually a very, very fundamental cross-cultural thing. And so, no, there, there's no difference. There's, there's different within the community. There's different within the languages. Uh, if I go in Germany, for example, after one minute, people will be done with a pitch. But if I go in Spain, they might go a minute and 10 seconds. Like, these are very tiny things. But again, like, okay. if you go to any, anywhere around the world, you'd have exactly the same kind of startup weekend. It's, uh, it's amazing. I mean, uh, I wish you guys all the best. Like, how many events you have? You want to do like next year? Oh, a thousand. A thousand. Roughly. Well, so I think we're gonna we're gonna start maybe with seven hundred, uh, seven hundred and fifty. It's our it's well, our first goal. But uh, if you ask uh, me in six months, I'm sure we're gonna go for a thousand. That's that's great. And mm -hmm. uh, good luck with that. Thank you and very thanks, much. Thanks for.